You're listening to JTE Movie Thinks. Is that is that the title? Is that is that correct grammar? All right, we'll go with it. It's a show about movies and thinking. And now here's your host, Every Man's Hero, JTE. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another week, and that means another episode of JTE Movie Thinks. Uh, this is going to be a really fun episode today, guys, because I got somebody uh, who I actually don't know very well, but have uh, met <laughs> while living in my new place. My roommate had a barbecue, and he has this awesome projector in his backyard, which I've actually tweeted out photos of, because we watched like Mad Max, we watched Furious 7 back there. Mm. Um, one of these, I think it was the Memorial Day uh, yeah, it was just yeah. a barbecue. I don't think um, it was a planned screening day. No, it was just a Memorial Day, like, kind of barbecue, weekend thing. Yeah. Um, and I met Mr. Stanley Wong. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> nice to meet you, Stanley. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, it's cool to be on. This actually, this might be the first podcast that I've been on, to be honest. Oh, really? Yeah, I think I was on another one that was more like a weird improv thing, but that wasn't really... Uh, improv podcast. That sounds like a... F- that, this is kind of that, because... I have literally no structure for this show, except for movies and who knows where it's going to go. So this is a little bit of improv. Yeah, I guess. I mean, we'll, we'll just, see how it goes. Just not, <laughs> yeah, it's just not funny. <laughs> um, so basically, we started talking at the Memorial Day barbecue, and one thing I realized, you knew your movies. Yeah. Listen, I'm a film geek, and I recognize pretty quickly you're a film geek <laughs> also. Yeah. I, I went to school for film, stuff like that. I've worked in film. I yeah. still I came out here for it. So. Yeah, and you've even starred and directed in your own film. Yeah, or I, I didn't direct it. Was, it was kind oh, of a very did, collaborative oh, a, thing. Oh, it was a yeah. collaborative thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's how it is at film school. Yeah. I, I co-directed so many short films. Yeah. I couldn't even tell you. Uh, but one thing that you mentioned to me, which I was kind of blown away by, is you've actually been in some very big films. Uh, you were in 21 Jump Street. Yeah. You had a cameo, basically, in 22 Jump Street. Yeah, yeah, I guess you'd call it yeah. that. Um, <laughs> and let's let's talk, because those were the ones where I was like, the second you told me your role in the movie, I immediately knew who you were. So yeah. tell the audience, what was your role in 21 Jump Street? I mean, to put it simply, and I, I hate the way they say this, is I, most people would say, like, oh, you were one of the nerds in 21 <laughs> Jump Street. I, I like to say we were, like, Channing Tatum's posse, part of, like, his, yeah. his chemistry class uh, you know, clan, you know? Yeah, I, yeah. But yeah, people will say the nerds. Or in the second one, they actually ha- abbreviated us as the interns, which was a little better, oh, okay, I yeah. Um And it's funny because I remember the the first... I love that in the first one on Jump Street where they flipped the whole roles of Jonah Hill and Chan Tatum. Yeah. Because Channing was originally supposed to go into the chemistry science lab and Tatum was supposed to go into the football. The yeah, ball, or, or the drama, drama club. Yeah, yeah. there's like a mix of what's yeah. cool and what's not, I and, guess. Because Channing's not very smart, he mixes the names up when they're in the principal's office, mm-hmm. and so Tatum be, kind of becomes friends with these geeks, nerds, <laughs> whatever you want to call them, the posse. Um, and one thing I always remember is that lightsaber scene. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, that was Johnny Pemberton's idea. Oh really? Yeah, I mean, I, I did, obviously didn't get to participate mm-hmm. in that lightsaber battle, but um, yeah, there was always like there was a very improv-heavy movie, so yeah. I mean, to be really honest, that movie was very, very improv. Like, we would get, I'm sure you know in movies, you would get your sides, you know yep. what's on the script. That almost never mattered. I, I feel like, you know, I, I've been to, like, acting classes and such, and they always say, like, you know, you have your sides, you want to study your script, you want to, like, get to know your character. I feel like for that movie, it, like, really didn't matter because the sides were, like, very basic guideline, and, like, you would just get on set and just improvise, like, constantly. Um can you so, talk a little bit about how you actually got the part? Like, oh. did you have to audition? Like, what was the process? I mean, just as a str- this is a strange history of where I went to film school in, in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Um, New Orleans, Louisiana has like a booming film industry. Yeah, so they're huge over there right now because taxes and all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so upon graduation, I was I was trying to get whatever I could. Uh, I, I actually had more of a technical background in school. I learned I knew how to do camera, electric, oh, okay. and all that stuff. Uh, and I. Upon graduating, I was an electrician. I was like an actual like, really? unionized okay. electrician on set. So I worked on like Green Lantern and like the mechanic and a handful of things. Oh, really? Um, and at one point, uh, an agent calls me. Like, it really was kind of out of the blue. They call me and they're like, hey, Stanley, Stanley, right? We, we've heard that you're an Asian guy who, who does <laughs> acting. And okay. I was like, okay, that's not untrue. I, I did do some stuff in film school. Yeah. So apparently, they're just like, that's, we, we need that. Like, being Asian in Louisiana, the Deep South, is a commodity, so we would like to sign you on for our agency. And me, I was just like, 
Okay. Wow. So they literally, call, it's like, usually you have to go chasing these things. Yeah. And you have like, go out of your way to try to get this. They literally called you. They it was called like, we me. need an Asian guy. Because the way I found out is like, in Louisiana, if there's like a minutely kind of Asian role, they're going to call like five people. Maybe, I don't know. Okay. I'd say about that. Because there was even a role where I, I auditioned for the, the Gangnam Style guy, Sai. I auditioned for that role. And I was like, I emailed to my agent back. I was like, are you sure they want me? Because I don't look like this guy. And yeah. they're like... Yes. Wait a minute. They what? wouldn't call you otherwise. What were you doing as the Gingham guy? <laughs> it was for like one of those like parody movies. Oh, uh, kind of like yeah. Meet the Spartans, those types. Okay. So I don't think it had to be super <laughs> accurate. But granted, I went to the audition. I, I dressed up. I had learned the little horse dance. Okay. And and to be honest, I went. I looked at the other people in the room and mm-hmm. they like had some Hispanic people there and stuff. So like I was like, I guess... I guess I could pull this off, maybe. Granted, they they pick someone else. It's like a Filipino guy, like I'm half Asian. Kind uh, of? Yeah, no. yeah. But no, there was probably some straight up Hispanic people there too. <laughs> uh, That's amazing, ah, Hollywood. But yeah, uh, Twenty One Jump Street. I got that breakdown. Mm-hmm. I remember specifically reading it. It's just like, so you're gonna play a nerdy kid who doesn't. You probably didn't get any girls in school, and you know, it's, and you know. Okay. After reading that, I was just like, okay, I'll just I'll just play myself. I think yeah. I can do that. <laughs> And it's funny because it's the role I've been researching my whole life. Yeah, I honestly didn't actually like rehearse that much. I okay. kind of just did my audition, left. And I was like, that was good. I did a callback. Little I know, I was meeting Phil and Chris Lord, but I was gonna say, Phil Lord and Chris Miller. So they actually did were there for the casting. Yeah, process. they were there for the callback, and oh, okay. they were just like, wow, you were great. Um, I guess it kind of is a there's a lot uh, uh, as a funny story. The thing that they said was like really kind of like helped me stand out was they said like all the other guys were like nerdy and they were kind of like you know like Ugh, like they're kind of like <laughs> dwelling in their own nerdiness yeah. like kind of like playing like the meat kind and they're just like no dude you're just you were like that guy but you're like you know you're comfortable who you were and you just okay. owned it and there was also like we did we had this improvised improv thing mm-hmm. where they're like they wanted me to pretend like the reader was supposed to pretend to like try to get me out to a party and i had to come up with reasons why and my okay. reason why was i had to i was like man you know, I really want to, but I, I have to pick up my mom at the airport tomorrow, and, you know, I just, I got to do it really early in the morning, and they just, I guess that was so specific and strange yeah. that they thought that was amazing, and great, it was, it's based on a true story, because I was, okay. I was out on a date once, and then my mom calls, and she's like, Stanley, you have to pick me up at the airport really early tomorrow, and I just, I remember, like, turning to this girl, we were, like, in the car, I remember being like, hey, listen, I, uh, I have to go home, because I have to pick up my mom at the airport tomorrow. <laughs> this girl did not believe you for a second, did she? <laughs> I don't she, whether or not she would believe me. I just yeah. know it was not a great line to like okay. to go with. But yeah, so that that's what got me on Twenty One Jump Street. That's great. And so, what was it like, you know, doing the scenes with Chang Tatum? Did you have any scenes with Jonah? Or was it just Tatum? I would say, um, yeah. I mean, he was there. I don't, yeah. I don't feel like we interacted as much. With, okay. Um, but uh, I guess yeah, they just improvise. So that's that's I can't. And who's the better improviser, Channing or Jonah? Because Jonah kind of has a reputation for Jonah, being... Jonah, for sure. I mean, I don't want to dog Channing at all. Channing yeah. is a great guy. He, you know, uh, well, I won't get too much in this, but I initially thought Channing Tatum would be kind of an asshole because I only knew him as, like, the okay. G.I. Joe guy and the, what's <laughs> it, the, no, no, not the notebook, the... Step Up? <laughs> he, well, I didn't yeah. see that. The other Nicholas Sparks movie that he starred in. Oh, yeah. Dear, was it Dear John? Was that Dear his? John, Dear John. Dear John. My mom all, loved that movie. They all run together for me. Oh, uh, yeah. But uh, I thought, I'm like, oh, yeah. cool. Pretty boy guy. He's probably an asshole. But it turns out he's he was like the coolest guy. He was really, like, really, really nice. Uh, he was just a bro. Like, <laughs> he just, he just like wanted to get drunk. He just That's wanted to do to fart hear, jokes. Man. Yeah, he was... You like because there's so many stories. Especially, I've been working in Hollywood for like seven years. Uh, you, you you hear stories about people that you really admire, and it puts a damper de- when you're like, oh man, I want that guy to be awesome, you know. Nah. So it's good to hear when somebody is actually a cool dude, and like you said, just a bro. Yeah, he's just a genuine. I think because you know he came from nothing. Like True. that's whatever it is. he he wasn't legitimately a, a male stripper, and <laughs> he just yes. he just kind of got lucky. And you know, I don't think he. I don't think he's like been swallowed by the fame. I think he's just thankful for it, and that's that's, awesome, that's cool. Man. Yeah, that's the way it should be. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. Um, oh, well. And so, yeah, I and I remember you in Twenty One Jump Street. You you play your your character. Tell me if I'm wrong. Really deadpan, kind of deadpan. Yeah, you, you really had like this deadpan kind of like you're just like whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's. I think that's just kind of my thing. Uh, <laughs> I think one of the having come come to LA and like I've started when I came out to LA I wanted to like become more of a trained actor so I go into all okay. these schools and stuff like that and like 
what I've figured out is my greatest asset is just being me. Okay. Because I've always just been kind of an off kind of guy, and I think that's just the most interesting thing I can play. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I kind well, of... Well, it's good to play to your strengths. Yeah, yeah. It's... You talked, you went to film school. I went to film school also. Ah. And when I went to film school, my thing was, I want to do action movies. I want to do dramas. Oh, really? That was like my in my head, because I love growing up movies, watching like Goodfellas and Godfather, mm-hmm. you know, Mystic River, all these like Unforgiven. Like, I like the dark, gritty movies. But once I got to film school, I found out I was so much better at comedy. That's, and I ended up, yeah. everything I did in my film school years was comedy based because it's what I was good at. Sometimes what you want to do might not be what you're good at. That's, yeah, I would I say I'm the exact same. I'd say, like, more often than not, my favorite movies are dramas or mm-hmm. thrillers or like that. The stuff I make is more often not comedies. I have attempted to make kind of more dramas and they, like, aren't as good. So, yeah, yeah you kind of have to, yeah, play to your strengths. Like play you your strengths. Saying. One of the great dir- uh, directors, Frank Oz. Uh-huh. This guy's mainly known for playing <laughs> Yoda. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. yeah. And he's very, but he's done a lot of comedies. Bowfinger. He's did. I think he did Muppet in, Muppets in Manhattan. Like he's done all these family things, and he said in several interviews he loved seventies gritty movies like The French Connection mm-hmm. and Godfather, and those were the movies he always wanted to make. But he kind of got categorized because he was so good at making these family kind of comedies. Huh. To the point where he actually finally one day tried to make a drama. It was called The Score with Edward Norton, uh, Robert, Robert De, Niro, De Niro, Marlon Brando. And that was like his... He was so happy to make that movie because he finally got to do what he always wanted to do. And, and that movie's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Again, uh, but I love Bowfinger. I think that movie's hilarious, especially if you've worked in Hollywood. And I think he had a lot to do with... Um, like I think did he direct Labyrinth? Jim Henson directed Labyrinth. Yeah, I don't think he. Did but that he one. does. He did a lot. He does a lot of that kitty stuff, and I think he's great at it. And that just goes to show you, just because you love something, sometimes you just might not be good at, it, or you might be better at something else. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's interesting you say because uh, like talking with I, I talk a lot with Phil Lord, the director of Twenty One Jump Street, mm-hmm. and you would think you know he's so far I've done mostly comedies, oh, yeah. maybe meta stuff like that. But like talking, he's very actually well well versed in like classic movies and foreign movies and all really? like that and uh, it's kind of surprising that like I guess you know your tastes don't necessarily line up with what you create I guess <laughs> so, I totally understand and let's talk a little bit about those two directors because these guys are they're hot right now I heard they're like gold I think that's like <laughs> I people mean, quote them as saying they're just cashing studios are just doing whatever they can to get these guys to put on their projects uh, Lego movie was huge uh, 21 and 20 Jump Street were huge uh, I Cloudy. love Cloudy with Chance Meatballs that is one of my favorite animated films because of the humor mm-hmm. and the smart writing. And you take them out of the movie, like Cloudy with Chance Meatballs 2, Two yeah. not as good as the first one. That sharp satire and that writing, the comedy timing just wasn't there. And and I said this when I first saw Cloudy with Chance Meatballs, it reminded me a lot of like Simpsons humor. Hmm. Like classic Simpsons, like from not, season two to like season eight, when they were like in their prime. Oh, yeah, a lot of times yeah. when Conan O'Brien was writing for oh. them and stuff. Like, I just, I got that, I bet, I, I'm sure you haven't asked them this, but I bet if I asked those two guys if they were influenced by the, that cartoon series, they'd probably say yes. Yeah, probably. I mean, they're they're very cool. Um, I got to actually get to know them. I think maybe I've related to them because I came from more of like a filmmaker side of things. Yes. I wasn't just like an actor to them. That's good. Um, so yeah, I would talk to them about it. I, I, I showed them a couple of my short films and stuff like that. They, uh, and... Yeah, they're just really cool guys. Their they're directing style was actually very interesting. I guess the story to tell is like on set, they actually weren't very hands on about like how to like, you know, direct us really. And I, I, was, I really? was I was actually kind of like, man, are they going to like, how's this going to, because I didn't know them. I actually <laughs> yeah. didn't see Cloudy before I worked on the movies. Oh, really? Okay. So I was kind of worried. I was like, are they really doing that much? But they, I think coming from the animation world, they kind of like don't know how to like, they were saying, like, you know, in the animation, like, if you don't like something, you just tell them to make it again. Yeah, like, yeah. For, you know, and, they, and you work on it for, like, five years or something like that. Uh-huh. But they, they said on set they were just very much, like, they just wanted to allow it to happen. They wanted to get talented people to just do it in front of the before their eyes. Okay. And uh, granted, they had a lot of great ideas probably while they're making it, too. I mean, 22 Jump Street, the credit scene, was not in the script or, you know, I didn't know that was going to happen. Really? So when I went to the premiere, I saw it, I was just like, I was like, that's amazing. Like, that's that's... <laughs> I don't know. It's I guess I don't know. I learned a lot about directing, kind of like just seeing them. Kind of, they kind of have a hands-off approach, but at the same time, they they still have a very, uh, you know, their stamp is still on it. Like all their yeah. stuff has 
their style too. It's interesting because it's one thing to direct, but there's only a few directing pairs out there. Mm. There's the Hugh brothers who did movies like From Hell. Oh yeah, and like all these other films. The brothers, uh, Ham, uh, Cohen's. And... Yeah, the Cohen brothers. So it's rare that you see a team. Like we're kind of seeing it now. We got the Russo brothers who did Captain America. They're always related, it seems. It's, right? Or wife, even wife, husband, wife teams. What's the relationship with Phil Lord? Are they just friends? At they're Madden? college friends. College friends. Yeah. Very much like Wes Anderson and Owen Wilson. But they were never. Kind of they never co-directed, yeah. but they co-write a lot of their movies. Yeah, yeah. So it's funny how I can understand that because there were certain people when I was in college that I attached myself to because we had the same sensibilities. Yeah, when it, whether it be like co- comedic timing. Or, like, you know, you kind of get that shorthand, especially, I'm sure, these directors where they can just look at each other and know exactly what they need to do. They don't have to say it sometimes. Yeah, I think it's true. rare to find somebody you can work like that with, but if you can, hell, why not do it? Two minds are better than one. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so, <laughs> also, let us we will say, I love 22 Jump Street. Yeah. I think it might be better than the first one. I don't I, know. I agree. You agree? Okay. And I remember there's that one scene where you guys make a cameo. Yeah. You're back as, like, the interns. You're, yeah. Like, you're working in the police station. And I remember thinking to myself, I was so happy when I saw that scene. I was like, oh, <laughs> great, these guys are back. But they're not, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was mean, like, oh, I wish they would have had a little more of a role in the movie. Although I still thought it was cool they gave you guys a shout out. There's still, I mean, just the story how we even got onto that was, um, like, the second movie, the first movie obviously was a big deal. And then there's, like, words. There's like, oh, they're going to make a second one. Everyone's always asking me, like, oh, are you going to be in the second one? And me being a filmmaker kind of yeah. guy, I'm like, I don't think it makes any sense to bring us back. You know, it's the two guys get a new supporting yeah. cast. Like, we're not going to be in the second one. Secretly, I kind of hope for it. Well, see, I thought because they were going to college, your guys were going to college with them kind of I mean, thing. I guess. I mean, that. I just, yeah. realist, I get, I mean, maybe I'm a pessimist, but I was just like, yeah, probably not. Secretly, I hope so, but maybe not. Yeah. I don't think so. Then slowly but surely, I hear, oh, it's the same directors. Maybe. Then I figure <laughs> they're going to shoot in New Orleans again. Oh, that's that's a better chance. Uh-huh. Then I find out that they're shooting. I'm like, okay, it, it's probably zero. It's not going to happen. Okay. Um, wow, they were actually shooting before you even Yeah. Okay. And then literally, like, I think in the halfway point of their shooting schedule, I just get an email from the casting director, and they just say, hey, Staley, um, they're interested about having you in the sequel, so we just wanted to get your schedule to see if you're interested in being in it as well. <laughs> And you're like, no, I'm kind of busy this year. Of course you're going to be like, you yeah. can get me in there. It's funny. I, was, I just started working for College Humor. Um, oh, okay. And I was just like, oh, obviously to the cast director, I'm like, yes, I'm available. I don't, I, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Everything I was, else gets I, pushed aside. I was working full, full-time at College Humor, and I, I had this home, like, because I didn't tell him I was like an actor type, because mm-hmm. I, I still kind of have like this weird... Like, because especially in LA, like you say, like, oh, I'm an actor. Like, yeah, people there's are just a stigma like, that comes cool. with. Cool. Yeah, there's a stigma that comes with being an actor in LA. Yeah. So I totally understand that. So I was working in the post production department there. So I was just like, hey, I, I have to like take off for a couple of weeks. And they're like, oh, really? Why? What's going on? I'm like, I, I have to be in a movie. And they're like, what? Wait, what do you mean be in a movie? I'm like, I have to be in Twenty Two Jump Street. And they're like, why do you have to be in 22? And I'm like, well, I was in the first one. And they're like, wait, what? There's, they're like, I had their yeah. mind blown by this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I got to be on the movie. Uh, we weren't in the script like at all. So that was even okay. stranger. Cause like I would sit in my trailer, I'd look at the sides and like, it's just pages where we're not in it. I'm just like, well, I, I guess I'll, I'll my just, trailer. <laughs> yeah, I'll figure it out when I get there. And literally we would just get on set and be like, okay, uh, how about y'all do there? And then maybe y'all just interject something. So like, this time, so in the first movie, I only had two scripted lines. Okay. I would try to improvise where I could, but I was still kind of new to the whole thing. And mm-hmm. I, I, didn't, I felt like I didn't want to like overstep things, so I didn't try to improvise too much. What ended up happening was nothing but my two scripted lines ended up getting on the first one. But it's fine. you know. I, I understand. It was a very improv heavy movie. They, they can't keep everything. So the second movie, I was like, I need to do as much as I can. So I was, I was trying to like turn it on. I'd since taken like UCB yeah, okay. classes and such. Uh, gotcha. So I was like, I need to like be funny, I need to be quick, have these quick lines and stuff, so again, I, I don't have any scripted lines, but I was like, maybe, you know, I, yeah. I, potentially people were like, were like, how many lines do you have? I'm like, either a lot or none. <laughs> or none. <laughs> um, turns out, like, they kind of kept it to none. Uh, mm-hmm. We are actually in any of the scenes that involve the police department, like, whenever okay. they're in, like, the 22 Jump yeah. Street department. They just ended up cutting those out severely. Like, oh, really? Like, you so know, you, there's a lot of stuff that hit the cutting room floor. Yeah, which the, the deleted scenes, I actually found them. I was like, oh, that's where they all are. Oh, uh, there's great. a lot of that stuff there. Um, like, just, I mean, if you think, like, the scene where he gets, like, his his nuts, like, electrocuted, yeah. that was, like, 
we did that for like you know a couple hours. We we, we improvised a bunch of stuff. In the movie, yeah. it's like two seconds. Yeah. Because obviously it gets the joke across in the okay. two seconds. So, um, yeah. So they 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 only kept what they could keep. Um, but it's you know to be honest, I always say I was lucky to be in the movie at all. So I don't. I don't, hey. you know, I can't hate him. And as an editor, you know, I, I understand. <laughs> yeah, totally understand. Um, and you're actually still working on other stuff today. Yeah. Like, um, can you give us a little hint, some projects you got coming up without I mean, giving away I too much? I don't think, I mean, obviously I've already, I put on like my IMDb page, so it doesn't, I, 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 I recently got another thing, uh, it's the new Adam McKay movie, it's called Big Short. Yes, with Ryan Gosling, Gosling and Christian Steve Carell. Bale, Steve Carell. Oh, Christian Bale's in that too. Christian Bale. Oh, uh, wow. Who's the fourth guy? Oh, Brad Pitt, because it's made by his Holy production crap. company. All star cast. Yeah, but it's not going to be like a straight comedy. It, like obviously, Adam McKay is known for Anchorman yes, of course. and crazy, imp- crazy improvised comedies. This one, I believe, is going to be more like Wolf and Wall Street in tone. Really? Yeah. That's I, I a, I'm curious to see him make that move to like a more serious. Yeah. Well, kind he of obviously. You saw the other guys kind of. He, I think he always makes up that kind of has like a political. Oh, uh, other guys undertone. I mean, it wasn't soft. They, it wasn't subtle. They, it wasn't subtle. Is the way to say. But it. even Anchorman Two kind of had like their very thing. true. He definitely um, has some strong opinions about certain things. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. He, I, I yeah. haven't say it as such on the set as well. <laughs> I, I guess I, I don't want to get too much into uh, that. But uh, yeah, yeah. This movie, I think, will be a genre departure. I think, but like like Wolf of Wall Street, I think it'll be. I don't know if you can call it. A, was Wolf of Wall Street a dark, dark comedy? No, it, yeah, it's a. I feel like it's, it's a, a drama comedy, with, comedic, it's, with comedic elements. It's a dramedy, maybe. I guess. It's 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 kind of like Goodfellas is a gangster movie, but it's funny at times. Yeah, I. I guess Wolf of Wall Street is. I would almost put it comedy more than anything, really. Yeah. Okay, so I feel like yeah, I, it's not wrong to call it something like that. Yeah. Granted, totally. granted, I never even got to read the script. You, you oh. gave it to me this time. They're like, yeah, you don't, you don't get to have it. I was just like. Okay. Uh, so sorry. <laughs> I'm excited. You know when that's gonna be coming out? Uh, I only know as much as, as like much IMDb <laughs> told me, which was like 2016. Oh wow. So okay. well, look out for that one, guys. And how big's your role in that one? Uh, I would say it's le- it's one major scene, okay. but I believe they won't cut it out. And it, okay. like I'm in like a pivotal scene, and that's I get my own worry, little man. little monologue. I, I think it'll be fun. It'll, I think I'm excited. I'm more excited about this than. Possibly anything I've ever done before, so that's kind of cool. I can't wait. I can't wait to sit in the theater and be like, oh shit, there's Stanley. <laughs> yeah, that's always a kind of a weird thing. Uh, yeah, it's, it has got to be kind of mind blowing. I mean, with that kind of talent, though, man, Christian Bale, Brad Pitt, Ryan Gosling, Steve Carell, I mean, that's just that's a, a big huge, movie. That's man. a big that's movie. That's a huge movie. Uh, I only got to meet Steve Carell and Ryan Gosling, obviously. Um, okay. Steve Carell, I don't think I've talked to him too much, but he seemed like a very nice guy. Um, yeah. And uh, Ryan Gosling, I actually talked to him a good bit. Um, he's very, very chill. He was very dedicated to his craft. He actually would like rehearse with me. I was like, wow, like, wow, really? Yeah. He's just like, he's like, Hey, I have some ideas. Why don't we run these things? And I was just oh like, wow, God. that's cool. <laughs> Every uh, girl listening right now Ryan is like, Gosling. we're taking a treat places. Dude, my sister was freaking out. She's like, Oh my God, you're on a Ryan Gosling movie. And then like at one point near one of the end of the day, she, I, he, she FaceTimed me. And then I was just like, I was like, Oh wait, Ryan Gosling. Over. Hey Ryan, talk to my sister. And she like froze. Oh. And, like, and she's just like, uh, and Ryan Gunson's just like, oh, hey, uh, okay, well, I, I guess I'll go. Like, she said, no, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that's, she said she had like a Ryan Gosling yeah. themed bachelorette party, so that this was probably like the highlight of her. She actually wrote that on her Facebook, my life is now complete. Oh, I man. FaceTimed with Ryan Gosling specifically. That's so funny. Oh, that's hilarious. Uh, but no, it was funny. I got to talk to him. Grant, I didn't see it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got to talk about his directorial debut. I was curious because he is an actor turned director. Yeah, that's and right. It's his Lost first River. movie. Was it Lost River? It was, I think it was called Lost River. Okay. That came um, out. Yeah. I didn't see it, but I didn't hear great things. But I didn't say that, obviously. I've heard mixed things, too, yeah. Um, but I did ask him. I was like, have you directed stuff before you made that movie? Mm-hmm. And he's just like, you know, just short things here and there. Um, you know, and I was like, oh, well, you know, that's good because yeah. I've heard... I was telling him Ben Affleck made movies, made a movie. I, I'm sure he's made a couple things before. It was Gone, Gone Baby, Baby Gone? Gone. Yep. But specifically on IMDb, IMDb, he has a movie listed. I think it was made in 1993, and it's called. And it, it's. I'm probably getting this wrong. It's a long title, but I believe it's called "I Killed My Lesbian Wife and Stuck Her on a Meat Hook, and Now I Have a Three Picture Deal at Disney." I believe the title is something along those lines. Jesus, I think I think it was also the working title for Gone Girl. Oh, really? It wasn't. <laughs> no, I'm um, just but I was telling him, like, yeah, you know, Ben Affleck made yeah. um, that movie as well. And he was like, really? He's like, really? Ben, I, I want to see it. I'm like, yeah, I've heard it's not great. So wow. 
they, you know. Very interesting. <laughs> uh, wow, that's crazy. He's, so he's, he's like, yeah, is it on YouTube? Uh, oh, <laughs> I have to check that out. Ryan Gosling. Yeah. he What, was... what a cool guy. <laughs> I love Drive, too, by the way. That's like... Lost River, you could tell he takes a lot from like Nicholas Wine yeah. Ruffin and a little bit David Lynch from what I heard. Mm. Um, but I'm glad to hear he's an awesome guy too, man. It's great when you hear these people are awesome. Listen, the guy's had a kid with Eva Mendes. If you're That's not true. The, I would be the happiest person in the world if that was me. Yeah, <laughs> so can't, come on. can't complain. He's also, you know, he's got a lot of things going for him. He's Ryan Gosling. He's yeah. Ryan Gosling. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, all right, guys. Well, th- the first 25 minutes. We've just been covering you. It's so interesting. Uh, but I think it's time we get to the actual movie discussion. Ah, I could true. do a whole podcast just talking the movie industry with you. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to have have you come back sometime. Yeah. And a, just go into it some more. I kind of have a lot of yeah, yeah, you have such stories. A, <laughs> such a fascinating, so much fascinating things to know. Uh, we, this could be a two-hour podcast if we want it to be. Put it that way, people. Yeah. But <laughs> let's uh, let's talk some movies. That's what a lot of you came to hear. Um so I'm going to ask you, Stanley. Okay. The way this works is I ask my guests, what's the last movie you watched from beginning to end? Uh, and it can't be something you had to do for maybe you were researching a yeah, role yeah. or press or anything that was assigned to you. I want to know what was the last movie you watched, whether it be Netflix. You're just searching through the category and you find something. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a movie you actually own and you just said, you know what, I haven't watched this in a while. And you pulled it off the shelf. Uh, so I'm going to ask you, Stanley Wong, what was the last movie you watched? Uh, actually, last night I saw Up, the Pixar movie oh, Up. Oh, Up. Which, 2009, that was that was my favorite movie of 2000. Really? I, okay. Was it 2009? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, it was my favorite movie of that year. And uh, oh, yeah, wow. I saw it because, uh, I don't know if we're going to do it, but our plan was to mm-hmm. go to Comic-Con and I was going to dress up as the old man and my roommate wants to dress up as, he's white and he wants to dress up as, as the Asian <laughs> boy scout. <laughs> and then my girlfriend is going to dress up as the house. Granted, this is a very ambitious... With the balloons and everything? Yeah, and everything. Wow. It's very ambitious, so it might not actually happen. But it, it seemed like a good idea at the time. We are like, let's watch this movie for research. I feel like whoever gets the house has kind of the raw deal there. I don't know. you're walking around as a giant house. Depending on how we do it. We I haven't guess. actually laid out the logistics. Okay. But I also feel like the house is, in a way, the coolest <laughs> one, you know? That's okay. eye-catching. Um, so, have you... Well, listen, we actually were talking a little bit about animated films last week. Oh, really? And we did some Pixar talk. Is this your one of your favorite Pixar movies? I mean, everyone kind of puts Toy Story as the top. Uh, but would you put up, up, is it right up there with you? I would, I mean, here's the thing. Like, having watched it, this is probably my third or fourth time watching it. I think Up, it's strange to me. I think Up has some of the most gut-wrenching, like, dramatic moments to me. Well, out, the out, opening. Out of any movie. I and mean, even the opening, or in the specific, like, the part where he's flipping through the book... That gets me every time. And there are movies that are obviously just more dramatic, like straight up dramatic. Like, well, I don't know if you cry at Requiem of a Dream, but even something like, uh, I don't know, Grave for the Fireflies. Like, these are meant to be dramatic. Oh, God, Grave for the Fireflies. Yeah, that's a heart wrencher. But, like, to me. If you guys want to cry, guaranteed, Grave of the Fireflies, you will tear up. And maybe. You're going to tear up, or you're going to be like sobbering, ugly cry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or, you know, like. When Cuban Junior Junior is crying in Boys in the Hood, that kind of uh, cry. <laughs> yeah, it's just so tough. But that's that's pretty up there. But I don't know. Me personally, for some reason, like it's it's like children's movies and maybe kind of like the delicacy that they handle drama. That always hits me more so than like something that's just like so like in your face. Like this is like you know bad kind of. I don't know. I don't know if that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, I'm trying to think of movies like when you when I think of movies that make me cry, especially in the animated category. A lot of people, and this is not me, uh, but go to Bambi. Bambi's mom died. Uh, it, it's so long. I can't exactly. It's too far for me. Uh, Mark Ellis, who's actually a host of the Schmoes Down Movie Show, uh, he always says the Dumbo scene with his mother. Yeah, I've, I've heard that time. as well. Yeah, and I don't remember those movies as well. I just didn't really watch them. I was Lion King, Little Mermaid generation. Lion King has a, you know, the dad. Um, the, yeah, uh, Musafa dies. That's pretty rough. But I don't remember. I don't, think it, I don't think it hit me. Yeah, none of those ever really hit me that Oh, strong. you know what movie this does kind of, because even I saw it recently was Land Before Time. Oh, which, when the mom dies? I don't know. There's, I, there's like, that specific moment where he's just, like, wandering around with that leaf, and he, like, sees, like, his mom's shadow. Yeah. And it's just, like, not actually his mom, and he's, like, still trying to lick it, and, I don't know, <laughs> I, stuff like that. Yeah. It's just, I'm just like, man, god it's, damn it. Like, <laughs> it's, like, mortality. Like, the up thing, the first five, ten minutes, That's like yeah. goes through a whole life, and you're just, like, you're so with this couple, and even though it's such a short time, you're so attached to them. 
And because they're so damn cute together, yeah. That when she passes away, and it's all to like this beautiful music. There's it's no, no words. dialogue. Yeah, it's no dialogue. it's a ma- it's like a magic loss of just visual storytelling. Uh, you um, know, but here's the thing, and some people have criticized the film because they say it does it doesn't after that first ten minutes, nothing can really live up to it after that. I mean, it never reaches that height of emotion. I mean, I me personally that. Maybe I'm personally very tired because I, I felt like – this is kind of weird, but I felt like I related to the old grumpy man character. Really? And I still – this is kind of – I still kind of felt this way. I I felt bad for the old man, the months. You know, he yeah. – like I was personally like, why didn't they just give him the bird? Like this guy has been looking for <laughs> yeah. it for like 50, 60 years and, and it's weird. Like and there's that scene where they're at the table and he's like – He's like, oh, that bird looks like my friend. They're just like, wait, what are you talking about? And like, it's more of a misunderstanding. He thinks that they're there to like steal it, but they just, they were, he actually is there to like take his house there. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I, I, this is a weird to say, but I almost feel like the movie cheats in a way because then like, it's like a misunderstanding. And then like the months guy just kind of like goes crazy after that. I mean, granted, he probably, he might be crazy for yeah, all I know, but, crazy. but I, <laughs> he does I can't live with a bunch of talking dogs. That's, that is absolutely <laughs> insane. But, like, he just, he dies. And he, you know, yeah. all he wanted to do is, in the beginning of the movie, you establish this guy yeah. wants to, like, just show people he's not a liar because mm-hmm. he was he went there to just try to find this bird. And it's not like he wanted to, like, murder the bird at any point. Grand- That's like, one thing Pixar really does is they don't make their villains just bad guys. They That's give, true. They make them very sympathetic in certain ways. Like, even the last Toy Story. The, the what's his name? huggy bear. <laughs> oh, the bear, yeah, <laughs> The yeah. bear, like, he belonged to a little girl who got left behind while they were, like, yeah, driving across the country. So, like, you feel so bad for him, but at the same time, he is a villain because he doesn't learn anything, really. Well, I have heard, uh, it's like a scream or anything, the best villains are the heroes in their own story. Like, they, mm. you know, I mean, this might not be the best example, but even, like, Ra's al Ghul and Batman, yeah. he's, you know, he's bad, he's doing bad shit, but, like, he is, you know, like, yeah. from a certain point of view, you could be like, yeah, that makes sense. Killing a lot of people puts some balance <laughs> a little bit, I guess. I think a great... One of my favorite characters, villains in comics slash movies, is Magneto. Yeah, great, great example. Because he's a bad guy, but you kind of understand where he's coming from. Yeah. And so he always rides that line of good and bad guy. But there's one moment where you're like, you know what, this guy is just misunderstood. Then by the end of like Days of Future Past, you're like, okay, he's a bad guy. <laughs> like, he could flip that coin. Like, he could go to either extreme really quickly. Yeah. I think- I, man, I... It's... Probably, I think it might be my favorite movie of just the whole X Men saga. It was that moment where he has Kevin Bacon. He's just about to kill me. He's just like, mm. you know what? I agree with everything you said, but I, you know, I forgot what he said. Like, yeah. I, I hate you, or I'm going to kill you anyways. And I was just like, whoa. Like, <laughs> <laughs> did you like Days of Future Past? Days of Future. So wait, that's the second. That, yeah, that's the course, one yeah, I, I loved it. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of a did I dislike anything about it? No, I mean just stuff that didn't make sense. Do you like, like First Class more? First class, I felt, had really great moments, but it also had really bad moments. But overall, like, you know, better than X-Men 3. It was a good reboot, yeah. Better than X-Men 1-ish, I guess. I don't know, it's been a while since I've seen 1. I just love how Day Future Path brought the old cast and the new cast. Well, they... And Brian Singer coming back, I think, was a huge... That guy just... He kills those X-Men movies, man. Yeah. I think Matthew Vaughn did a good job, because he had that movie on a very short schedule. Oh, really? And you could tell some of the effects in first class aren't up... Yeah, do, I... Yeah, they're yeah. not the snuff with some of the other stuff. But Days Future Past, and I'm going to Comic-Con this week. Um, oh. You're going also. Yeah. One of the things I'm really excited about is that X-Men Apocalypse. 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 Because Apocalypse is like the one villain like every X-Men fan has been waiting to see on the big screen, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's one of the more popular ones. He's basically like a mutant god. <laughs> he's the first? Is that... I mean, I, he, yeah, he apparently he's the first mutant. He's... In the comics, he starts off around the Egyptian times. Yeah, that was the end of Days of Future. He's building he, the pyramid. Yeah, he's built like fucking like a Django set or some shit. He's yeah. like, blah, 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 blah. So, and they got Oscar Isaac, who's oh, killing he's, it lately. He's, he's on a roll, for sure. Yeah, and he's playing Apocalypse. I'm not sure how much of it is going to be physical, how much is CG. They did... Well, in the end of Days of Future Past, it looked like it was just a CGI guy, oh, yeah. right? Totally. He was... I think it was a guy makeup. It wasn't? But okay. grown up, like... Apocalypse Now is a huge dude with metal suits, metal art. Like, I don't think they're going that right. I, I hope they kind of... But his look is so specific. But, like, oh, you're right. I, I hope they find, like, a like a balance. Because, yeah. obviously, they don't go with the look of the actual X-Men characters because they're not yeah. wearing the spandex. Totally they even agree. make fun of it. Um, I hope they don't 
veer from it completely and do Galactus and it's just a cloud. <laughs> a cloud, yeah, that was um, worse. Because that's terrible. Horrible. Um, <laughs> granted, I'm not sure, like, if it would have been better if it was just like a big guy like floating around because <laughs> he's is he he's bigger than Earth is that right and yeah because he can swallow he can eat Earth Who? Galact- Galactus right yeah he's that that is, I can understand so how do you portray that yeah like literally he could like you know he's big enough where he could kick the Earth like a tennis ball yeah so like his eye would be I, a... I don't, yeah I'm not even sure how you would imagine like yeah. the the thing that comes to mind you remember the end of Mortal Kombat one and then Shao Kahn comes up in the sky <laughs> yeah that's the only closest thing I can <laughs> think kind of, of and I would never imagine that but yeah that makes sense <laughs> I, yeah, that's a yeah Mortal Kombat was a big movie in my childhood <laughs> so I remember that moment clearly and then obviously in the second movie they completely go away from that look yeah it, like he the I love that we've gone from up to Mortal Kombat yeah yeah um, <laughs> Mortal Kombat Annihilation doesn't even wear his mask and all that but yeah that's yeah. uh. <laughs> A different, a, a tangent for sure. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> all right. Well, because I talked that we talked a lot about animation last week, we'll, we'll just touch a little bit more on up. Uh, really, this episode was just to get to know you and some of your awesome stories. Uh-huh. Um, did Did you see Inside Out yet? Yes, I did. What was your thoughts of that movie? Because a lot of people were saying it was kind of a comeback I for think... Pixar because they listen. Brave was not very good. Mm-mm. Cars, everyone two, hates cars. Two, Cars 2, both of them, really. Yeah, and then the one before that was Toy Story 3. But... Oh, no, Monsters University. Oh, Monsters University. Which is not... Uh... I watched Monsters, Inc. after that. I'm just like, what do they do? Like, yeah, what were they thinking? Right. <laughs> what were they thinking? I think Inside Out really has brought Pixar back to their A-game. I think it's brought them back... Um, I, it's, for me, I'm still kind of... This might be me personally. I, mm-hmm. I I know there was like a very deep emotional journey. that You saw it, right? Yes, I did. Uh, I wasn't on board with it. Granted, really? I saw it, but I wasn't, like, brought... Like, my girlfriend was next to me, and she was, like, in tears. <laughs> okay. And I was just like, well, I guess it works for someone. Yeah, yeah. Granted, I saw I guess... Uh, yeah, I have a very particular, I guess, uh, opinion. I guess just, like, the dra- drama that was being portrayed. Mm-hmm. Like, it was, like, the girl, and... I was just like, this isn't that big of a deal. This, you know, this is whatever. <laughs> like, I understand that. Though the character for me that really kind of uh, hit my heartstrings hit yeah. was Bing Bong. Oh, yeah, that's, I think that's the moment for most people. Yeah, and I won't say exactly what happens to him, but his story and the way it plays out, like, everyone I think can relate to that, whether, to a degree. It's just, it's so sad. It is, (laughs) but, I don't know, the thing about me is, I guess, I've, we've both seen so many movies. I, I feel like I can sense things coming. So in this case, I was just like, I, you know, I, I, I I I agree with you. I, I saw it coming. But that's why I give the movie credit. When I get to see it coming and it and still, still kind of gets you, still yeah. gets me, then I'm like, oh, okay, well done. I knew it was coming. You still were able to pull it out of me. I feel like it's rare nowadays where I'm surprised by something like that. To me, my absolutely my favorite movies are the ones that can legitimately surprise me. Um, I guess the one that comes up, to, maybe I don't know. Uh, Whiplash last year was probably my favorite oh. movie last year, and I felt like I was genuinely surprised. I was like. I'm happy. This movie makes yeah. me happy for that reason. I loved Whiplash. It was my number two film of the year last oh, year. What was number one? Number one was Just Beat Out by Selma because... Oh, Selma. Okay, I haven't seen it. So. Okay, it really... Here's the thing. Whiplash, even though it was my number two, I'll say right now it was the best ending of any movie I've seen last year. It had yeah. the best ending. Yeah, if you could end great. your movie great, you, you got it. Ends with a bang yeah, for sure. You're, <laughs> half, you're halfway there with a great movie. So, Selma... A lot of times, like, if I can get emotional in a movie, it makes me like it more. Mm-hmm. Most movies, I get emotional maybe once. Okay. I got emotional, like, three times during Ooh, Selma. Ooh, three. <laughs> <laughs> like, 30 minutes in, I'm like, oh, my God, this is, like, emotional. Then, you know, an hour in the movie, I was like, oh, God. And then the last, very end, I'm like, oh, God. Damn, I'm, I'll have to check it <laughs> yeah, out. It's, I, I, I tell you, though, when I was making my top ten list, I struggled. Oh, okay. I, Whiplash and Selma flip flopped, oh. like back and forth. Even to this day, I still have part of me is like, maybe I should have put Whiplash number one. Maybe I should have put Selma. So that tells you how close those two were for me because they're two totally different movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I love them both equally in different ways. Oh, uh, well, what was your number three? I guess my number three was. I'm like going to the whole list, but number I'm, three. I'm trying curious. to. I might have uh, number three or four actually was X Men: Days of Future's Past. Oh, okay. I loved that movie. To um, me, uh, yeah, do you again, remember your like? Yeah, top number three. three uh, actually, I'm not entirely sure. I think for sure, I would say right now. I think it's Lego Movie. Mm-hmm. Granted, there is that Phil Lord connection a little bit. Yep. That Dude, influences it's, a little bit, but not much. Lego um, Movie was amazing. So. But also, that was one of the movies where I was just like, I couldn't. I was just, I just got the overwhelming sense of like, man, I'm, this is the kind of movie I want to make. Like, mm-hmm. it was, it just hit 
all the right comedic notes, but at the same time, it just, for those who haven't seen it, it just almost transcends itself near the end. And like, just, it, it surprised me. It that legitimately surprised me. The movie we talked about last week on the show. Oh, was really? Lego okay. movie. Well, I don't want to <laughs> No, no, burn it's it fine. Because I feel like you can't sing that movie's praises enough. It's a, yeah. It was one of the best movies last year. I think it might have been on my top 10. It might have been like my number 10. Or it might have just been oh. number 11. It was really close. Okay. I, I don't remember exactly, but it was up there. I think that actually, I'm not sure if that was my number three or if Birdman was number three, which obviously also, Birdman, Birdman was. Birdman was that high for you. Uh, I mean, it won Best Picture. Yeah, it did. Yeah. I don't know. Birdman. I wouldn't say I was so much on the emotional journey for Birdman, but to me, I just you can't deny just like the craftsmanship oh, and just how cool sure. that movie is. Like that movie is totally just like. So that was your top three. What I think it? so. What uh, was it your number one? Whiplash. Yeah. I think oh, Whiplash. Whiplash. Okay, Whiplash. Birdman. Lego Movie. It might be. I think it was maybe Lego Movie. Birdman. Yeah. I think oh, it was okay. That. Gotcha. Um, I'm trying to remember if my number three was. I think it was Excellent Days of Your Past. Or... I mean, I, yeah, that, that's legit. Uh, Life itself was in my top five. I'm a huge oh. Roger Ebert fan. It was a documentary oh, about Roger Ebert. I haven't seen it yet. That one it's also. It's on Netflix now, right? It is. Check I'll it out, check man. It that out. one made me. Because I grew up with Ebert like every Saturday morning. You know, it's funny. I, I watched. I didn't watch the show, but like, I didn't read reviews, but I would make sure to go on RogerEbert.com and read his opinion on movies. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's that. He was just. For me, he was like kind of like someone. You know, you got Mr. Rogers who teaches you <laughs> on TBS. <laughs> he was like my Mr. Rogers of movies. Yeah. Uh, and then it was Roger Ebert. So it kind of works I, out. I like that he... Well, I feel like maybe all critics have like strong opinions. But like, I didn't always agree with him. But I always still not. appreciated yeah. what he was writing and stuff. So. Totally understand. Like, you might not always agree with him. But you could appre- you know he's coming with somebody who has the knowledge to say what he's saying. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing with critics. Like, I work with a lot of online critics. It's uh, all about knowing, you know, the finding a critic where you have the same taste mm. as close as possible to me is the critics I like the most. I guess that's You see true. what I'm saying? Like, if I find somebody who I agree with 9% of the time, yeah, that's, that's the true. guy I'm going to go to most of the time. He might not, and again, there's that 10% where you won't agree with him, but you got at least know, well, we agree most of the time, I'm going to go with him. Yeah, he, we both, uh, Synecdoche is one of my favorite movies. I don't oh, know wow. Saying. It's Synecdoche. such a weird movie. And Charlie like, Kaufman. He, he considered that, I think he said it was his number one movie of the 2000 to 2010 mm-hmm. era. I'm just like, well, yeah, I like that movie a lot. I, I won't... Though he did like Juno a lot, and I, I'm not as on board with that. that. That's one of those movies that I think like, I haven't revisited that movie in so long, but it was a big hit when it came out, and all the critics loved it. But then there was that sometimes movies that happens and they come out with this backlash. What, like, they're like not, they don't hold up? They, they don't hold up, or people just kind of like, it gets overhyped, so people are just like, oh, it's yeah. not that good. Like Drive. I love Drive. I think I caught the hype, and I, didn't, I wasn't yeah, as and... on board. I love that movie. It was my number one that year. Oh. And pe- there was this backlash of people like, oh, it's a hipster movie, yada, yada, yada. Hmm. But... The first, yeah, it probably is. <laughs> <laughs> how dare you. Uh, but, you know, that's how it goes. Um, all right, man. Well, this has been a pretty good episode. I think it's been awesome. Yeah. Um, let's end this show with my favorite segment called JTE Movie Thinks. Oh. I got a crap load of people have hit me up on Twitter with movies. So, basically, I'm just going to read off some of these movies that they've tweeted me. And I just want to get your opinion on them. Like one sentence or... Yeah, you know, we'll talk just, about it a little okay. bit. Just give me, like, do you like the movie? Have you seen it? Have you not seen it? Okay. Um, here's one of my all-time favorite movies by Panna the Unifier at J-C-K-K-A-N Jackson, I guess it's mm. a way. Uh, he wrote okay. Braveheart. Braveheart. I like it. Um, like? Re- like? I liked it. Yeah, I thought it was a great movie. I haven't seen it in a long time. Okay. Because what? It came out in 95 or something? Yes, 95. Uh, Best picture all, winner. It won all of them. I have heard in since times it's one of the ones that maybe shouldn't have won everything. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I have also... This may not... Maybe it shouldn't matter, but like I have looked in like... He did make up a lot, you know. He made, it's a yeah, historical story. And... I think there's a lot of those history movies, though. I give him a pass. I don't look at it as a historical document. I know because the movie plays like a fable in some ways. It's just like this legend of what yeah. it was. I understand it's not true. For me, though, the movie's so good and the storytelling's so good, and I get so caught up that I just it's a I, I like yeah. it. It's a okay. great movie, and I like Mike Mel Gibson, uh, despite his haters. Or whatever. <laughs> All right, that's good enough. Uh, Tyler Ostrander at Tyler Ostrander. I know I'm butchering your name. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Grandma's Boy. Have you ever seen Grandma's Boy? I've seen it. I think that's... This is like Sandler's crew. Yeah. I don't remember liking it much. This is a while ago. I think okay. it's considered like a stoner movie. And it I is. Don't... It's kind of like a... <laughs> I mean, I don't It's like... a dumb movie. Yeah. It's stupid, but it's stupid funny. 
Like, it has nowhere... It did horrible at the box office. Oh, it did? Yeah. And, it's like a cult classic. But it's like though, a right? cult classic. It yeah. found its way on DVD and Blu-ray because it's so dumb that it's fun. Uh, I'm, I'm meh about it. Okay. I'm, I'm the same way. If it's on TV sometimes, I'll stop. If it's on the right scene, yeah. I'll watch it for a little bit. But it is stupid. There's no denying it. Uh, Chris at CC Scorsese. Nice mm. name. Uh, Rocky IV. Speaking of Rocky IV. Rocky IV. Happy birthday. Oh. This is July 6th. Stallone. We're recording this. Stallone's oh. birthday. And kind of 4th of July-ish. It kind of, very 4th of july Was that with... I saw a lot of people like reference uh, the Ivan Drago fight during 4th of July. Did, did that movie like take place around... Like, Have you not seen Rocky IV? I, it hasn't been a while. Obviously, I know for the fights and like the intense training sequences. Show's over, everybody. Whoa, Show's shit. over. Sorry, guys. We're, we're watching Rocky IV and then we're going to come back. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's the famous scene of Rocky with the American flag. Yeah. He basically beats the Soviet Union in the 80s. And he unites everyone with, with his slurred words. Now, <laughs> quick story, you worked on the first Expendables as I, an extra. As an extra. I was yeah. on it for like two and a half weeks and I just sat in like the holding because they didn't, they picked my brother instead of me. Oh, really? So, but I guess as a couple of funny stories, I, well, yeah, I don't, don't want to get into too much. But. I just want to hear... What was it like working on a set with Stallone? Was he very just kind of? He was not very hands on. He was not very. I know the crew would always consider. He was directing at that point. They called him, I believe, like the dictator, and he would. They would just be like, "Let's just set something up so he can change it." Um, (laughs) I guess another quick story. I was actually going. I was called to be Jet Li's stand-in, and I was like, "Wow, that's great! I love Jet Li. I get to be a stand-in." And then they said, "How tall are you?" And I'm like, five ten. They're like, "Jet Li's five five. (laughs) And I was like, oh. I'm like, yeah, sorry. And they picked a 5'5 five, five Hispanic guy. And I was like, well, I oh, guess well. he's better. Um, should we move on? Uh, no, no, but... We'll, Rocky Four. Uh, so was he... Real quick, like... Oh, he, he wasn't very hands-on. Uh, he... Was, I think no one... I think everyone was afraid of him. Okay, that's understandable. When many, you're around a legend, yeah. you're gonna be, you know, a little hesitant. Talk and I think it. people didn't like him. Granted, but I, I still... I, having heard Stallone's beginnings I respect him no matter what he's the best yeah <laughs> when you're that big when you're a legend I mean you can do whatever you want um, let's see let's get another fan here uh, man someone just someone else said Rocky 5 we're gonna get off Rocky no, I would much. love to stay on it oh someone's a demolition man look at all the Stallone love I'm getting on this Twitter demolition man is awesome. that's a 90s classic <laughs> yeah I wonder if it holds up as being legitimately good but I, I remember loving it and I think it's still great here's a great one uh, Chris Zimmerman at Zim uh, Bim Bim so what a been, fantastic name. This yeah. guy also has a fo- uh, podcast that I was a guest on called The Magnificent Seven, where they do Ooh. a top seven list. Ah. Uh, have you ever seen 13 Assassins? 13, the Japanese movie yes, by Takashi Mike. Takashi Mike. Mike. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it's Mike. <laughs> Just <laughs> a very American way to say it. Granted, I'm not Japanese. Maybe I'm <laughs> butchering it too. No, 13 it's, Assassins. It's, it's like Mike, but you know, the Americans Mike. Yeah, I saw it at South by Southwest. No way. I believe it was its US premiere. Uh-huh. Takashi Mike, he wasn't yeah. there because I believe that was when they had the the typhoon or something. I, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he wasn't not... there. Uh, that movie's great. It's, uh, oh, it's fucking fantastic. It's, uh, I believe it's very much a Seven Samurai ripoff. It very, it's 13, yes, yeah, basically um, 13 It's just an like ex- extreme version of it. I do remember the bo- the beginning being pretty boring, though. Pretty slow, really? right? I thought they did, a, the first 15, 20 minutes, they're just really building up the bad guy. Really? To a point where you hate him so yeah. much. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Greg, this was 2009, and yeah. when I was, that was the first year I went to South by Southwest, and I remember I saw, like, five movies a day. So it was very exhausting. So I was probably guaranteed one of the later movies in the day, and I was probably just like, I don't know. Yeah. I highly recommend 13 Assassin's Creed. It's a great I movie. I think it's one of the best action movies. It's on movies. Netflix, I think, so. If it, it is, yeah, check it out. The last 30 minutes is just a straight up fucking samurai brawl. Yeah. And it's, it's probably amazing. A, some of the best samurai fight extravaganzas for yeah, sure. Yeah, very good. Um, all right, guys, sorry I couldn't get to more of your tweets, but I got like 100 here, and I can only do so many. Um, but thank you so much, Stanley, for coming on. This has been great. Yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to having you come back on again to hear some more of your stories. <laughs> yeah. Um, and next time, I'll, I got some crazy Hollywood stories that I think maybe I'll get into next time, too. Because I've worked on some films, and I've seen ah. some shit. <laughs> yeah. uh, do me a favor. Let's let the fans know where they could find you as far as like Twitter and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter. Uh, my name is at swong37. Feel free to follow me. <laughs> I'm. I feel like... I have like only like 160 followers. Okay. I, I don't know if I'm bad at the Twitter game. I try my best. 
Yeah. But like almost all of my friends have more followers and I have more like Instagram followers or like Facebook friends than I do. So yeah, whatever. Yeah. Talk to me and about my opinions and I'll respond <laughs> more than likely. I'll stuff. attach you to the tweet uh, when I release this episode. Yes. So maybe that'll get you a few followers. A few. Um, yeah, guys, check out uh, the deleted scenes on 22 Jump Street DVD. Yeah. If you want to see some more Stanley Wong. Uh, is there anything else on YouTube they might be able to find you? I do have my own YouTube channel with a lot of like shorts and such that are very strange. Really? I do have uh, it, my... I believe my YouTube channel is just Stanley Wong. It's my name. Okay. There's some good stuff on there. I, I'm, I'm going to try to make movies. I'm, I'm gonna, I've am been trying to make more and more stuff on there, so check that as well. I also have a feature film that you mentioned before. That's right. That I didn't direct, but it was kind of it was a very collaborative thing where like I wrote it and produced it and edited it and helped write it and stuff like that, and I starred in it. And that movie is called Steve Chong Finds Out That Suicide Is a Bad Idea. Steve Chong Finds Out Suicide Is a Bad Idea. It's a 10-word title. And right. that's on uh, Amazon, iTunes. Oh, and, really? Uh, awesome. yeah, it's all out of... All, most of the digital things and yeah you, should, you can check it out yeah um, check it out guys um, awesome man that's great it's so nice to have some work out there for people to see and <laughs> I can't wait to see this movie you got coming out with all the A-list actors in Hollywood yeah look look for uh, Stanley Wong it's gonna be uh, the big short yeah the big short Adam McKay I'm so curious to see that <laughs> guys you can catch me at JT on Twitter all that good stuff and also uh, check me out on uh, Facebook and Periscope this week I'll be at Comic Con so it's going to be crazy. I'm going to be covering all the panels with the Schmozno crew and Screen Junkies. And if you're listening on iTunes, go ahead, write a review, and give me a five-star rating. I feel like I gave you a five-star podcast. Oh. I felt like this was a five-star podcast. Yeah, I, 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 I'll write a review. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Look so. out for Stanley's review. I think it's going to be really funny. Uh, all right, guys. Again, thanks so much, Stanley, and thank you guys for listening, and keep watching those movies. <laughs>